Hello everybody, my name is Graham Elwood and you are watching The Political Vigilante. So, Trump has come under scrutiny about some loans he got from Deutsche Bank. Over $2 billion to be a fact over the last couple decades. Some of that money even during starting uh, was during his uh, 2015, the beginning of his, his campaign to be president. So the head of Deutsche Bank, the former head, the guy who was in charge of Deutsche Bank during all this, he just committed suicide? So there's an investigation and then he commits suicide. Huh. 55 who signed off on a controversial Donald Trump loans commits suicide in his Malibu home. So this guy and Deutsche Bank have been being investigated for a while. This is a video from like a while ago, definitely before he committed suicide. Democratic lawmakers are readying new probes into President Donald Trump's business ties to one of the world's largest financial institutions. Lawmakers and aides familiar with the plans told Reuters the House Intelligence and Financial Services Committees are poised to dig into his dealings with Deutsche Bank. Deutsche extended millions of dollars in credit to the Trump Organization, making it one of the few banks willing to lend extensively to Trump in the past decade. White House officials did not respond to a request for comment. House Democrats sent Deutsche a letter in 2017 requesting Trump Organization financial records. At the time, the bank declined, citing privacy laws. But now Democrats control key committees, which means they now command subpoena power. And they're planning an array of investigations into Trump. A key witness in some of the probes will likely be Michael Cohen, the president's former lawyer. Cohen is scheduled to appear before the House Intelligence Committee in February. He's pleaded guilty to violating campaign finance laws and lying to Congress about a Trump Tower deal in Moscow. You come and testify before us, and you had better tell the truth, because if not, uh, you'll be prosecuted for it. But the former fixer may be getting cold feet. One of Cohen's advisors this week said he was facing pressure from the White House. The House Intelligence Committee chairman also said he would investigate a report in BuzzFeed that Trump had ordered Michael Cohen to lie about the Moscow deal. Adam Schiff tweeted, The allegation that the President of the United States may have suborned perjury before our committee in an effort to curtail the investigation and cover up his business dealings with Russia is among the most serious to date. We will do what's necessary to find out if it's true. Reuters has not independently verified the BuzzFeed story, which cites two unnamed law enforcement sources. Trump called Cohen a rat in a tweet last month for cooperating with prosecutors. So isn't this weird? So this investigation started a while ago, right? Let's get, analyze this. Thomas Bowers, 55, hanged himself on November 19th at his beachside home. The banker was not working for Deutsche Bank at the time. But let's, this is the, so <laughs> he's among a handful of people who signed off on loans totaling $2 billion to Trump in the decades before he became president. Over $2 billion for decades. He was the head of the American Wealth Management Division at one time and oversaw Rosemary T. Vrablic, Trump's private banker. Deutsche Bank was giving Trump loans as recently as 2015 during his presidential campaign to buy properties around the world. This woman, Vrablic, that he was overseeing, gave Trump a total of $300 million in loans. So then November 19th, the LA County Coroner's Office confirmed ruling that Bowers died as a result of suicide by hanging. I, <laughs> I gotta ask the question. Maybe he was suffering from depression. His wife passed away several years ago. Maybe he was depressed from that. And that's, that could happen, absolutely. But he's investigated for loans to Trump Trump is being investigated. Wait a minute now. If we're going to ask questions about Seth Rich's death, we don't know for certain, but it seems highly likely Seth Rich was the guy that leaked the Podesta emails and then he's killed in a botched robbery that's never fully investigated. He had his watch and his wallet on him. We're, we're allowed to ask questions. When we asked those questions about Seth Rich, we were called crazy conspiracy theorists. 
But I'm gonna ask this, I'm gonna ask the same questions. And if Trumpers are like, oh, Graham, no, 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 no. The ruling class is all evil and corrupt. Trump is a part of that. The Clintons are part of that. The Bushes are part of that. But what's also weird, I did a little digging. He's not the only banker to have killed himself recently. Wait, what? Bankers are just all suffering from depression? Another banker suicide, intriguing parallels between U.S. and Estonian deaths. Deutsche Bank has been under separate investigations for its role as Trump's banker and as an intermediary that helped the Danish bank based Donsky Bank's Estonian branch process suspect customer transactions mostly originating in Russia and in the United States. So they're helping do money laundering. This Dansky Bank, which Deutsche Bank was an intermediary for that helped this bank. So this bank, the Danish bank was being investigated so much so that the day the German authorities marched into Deutsche Bank headquarters in Frankfurt and seized files, police in Estonia announced the discovery of the body of Avar Rehi, the former head of Dansky's Estonian operations. Weird. Wow, were Epstein's guards anywhere around these guys when they hung themselves? Everybody seems to hang themselves. Anybody that could have damning information about very powerful people committing crimes, they all seem to just, they can't handle it anymore. They want to hang themselves. If we're going to ask questions about Epstein and Seth Rich, we're going to ask questions about this guy. And now this Estonian guy. Seems a little weird. Could the Deutsche Bank guy, he's in his 50s, look, the group in, in America with the highest rate of suicide is white males in their 50s. So you could, okay. But let's break that down a little bit. The majority of the white males in their 50s that are committing suicide are a lot of men, and each case is individual to the person to a certain extent, but one of the overriding themes is men in their 50s who have lost their jobs and gone through foreclosure and been laid off and they feel useless. They feel like I'm a failure because capitalism is, is, is crushes people. You know, I should be further along in my career. I'm in my 50s. I lost my job. Now I got to work at a Walmart or drive for Uber. My life is useless. I failed my family. I failed my kids. I, I My life, I'm going to take my own life, right? And there's a lot of contributing factors to each case. Do they have a history of mental illness or depression? Are there, is there drugs and alcohol involved? All those things could be true with the Deutsche Bank guy and even this, this uh, Estonian guy. Okay, but it's a little weird and we should ask the question. And like Horner said, he hung himself. But remember the New York coroner said Epstein hung himself and then his brother opened up an investigation and had a, sep separate, a separate forensic report that said now it's more consistent with a choking than a hanging? When people, when there's investigations about serious crimes, obviously Epstein, pedophile, sex trafficking, all these powerful people in his black book, and now we've got other powerful people. The Estonian guy had ties to oligarchs and Putin, and this guy, the Deutsche Bank guy, gave, that's, a, that's a public matter of public record. He gave Trump over $2 billion in loans. As recently as 2015, he was getting loans for real estate when he was running for office. You're trying to tell me he didn't use any of that real estate money for his campaign? Come on, I don't trust anybody. Trump is corrupt, the Clintons are corrupt, the Bushes are corrupt. I don't trust any of these ruling class people. So I'm, we gotta dig a little further on this. We gotta find some more information on this. It's hard to find because they're just saying, oh, there's nothing, nothing else, but let's see what else gets uncovered. Dead men tell no tales. This guy can't be subpoenaed. The guy in Estonia can't be subpoenaed and have to stand trial under oath. They can't do that. Epstein can't stand trial. He can't 
give testimony under oath. Thanks for watching the show, everybody. Thanks for supporting what I do. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Even if you've done it before, YouTube is unsubscribing people. We just crossed 57,000 subscribers. Let's get up to 60,000. Let's get to 100,000 in the next couple of months. Watch the video or the ads all the way through. When you click skip ad, I don't get paid. Even bring up a separate browser window if you need to. And please support me. I am totally supported by viewers such as yourself, okay? So go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood or rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood, which is a blockchain cryptocurrency platform um, and share these videos out there. And of course, join me on the road with Ron Placone. We're doing the Progressive Comedy Tour. We were just in Australia. It was amazing. Thank you to everybody that came out to those shows. Ventura, California, December 13th. Hollywood, California, December 14th. Tickets at GrahamElwood.com. Thanks for watching.